Kelly, stop with the non-stop chatter. Well, hello, my spooky friends. Yeah, sorry, S Scully. He just will not hush today. I mean, he's going on and on. Okay, it's been a couple of days since I've done some ghost stories. So, hush and let's get to it. Alright, these are submissions by you, my subscribers. So if you like spooky stories, you know, true ghost stories, then you might want to consider subscribing. It would be great if you did. And if you're new to this channel, I'm Silky, that Scu wait, that Scully. <laughs> and we're going to tell some true ghost stories from my very haunted house. Okay, this first one comes from Miss Jackie. I've heard of this before. A good friend of mine said she saw her cigarette light up as if someone was smoking it, but it was resting in an ashtray. She then held it up and said, here you go, and the embers on the end of the cigarette glowed brightly for two to three seconds. Now, when she goes out to the garage for a cigarette, she always says, we're going for a smoke. <laughs> Her mom was a chain smoker, and we both think she just popped in for a puff. Now, this was in response to the ghosts of Gettysburg. Remember that one I did where they turned, the, actually there was no one even holding the cigarette. It was sitting there, and somebody was smoking it, puffing away. So I don't know. Again, I'm not sure what we do when we're ghosts. I mean, in the afterlife, but... I, I mean, you know, at that point, is nicotine even bad for you? I don't know. <laughs> don't take medical advice from me <laughs> when it comes to that. I don't know. Okay? I'm just saying. It seems like people are having the time of their lives <laughs> in the afterlife. Who knew? Thank you, Miss Jackie, for sending that in. This one is by Robert Stevens. I was working a trauma center and one of our trauma room monitors would come on at 3 a.m. Like, everything happens at 3 a.m. If y'all don't know, that's like they say ghost time. I wake up at 3, just about every night. It was as if it was attached to a patient. Our area that was the old pediatric ICU was seriously haunted. Call light would go on in empty rooms, doorknobs would shake, People would s say someone put a hand on their shoulder. Y'all know, I'm not with the ghosts touching. No, keep your hands to yourself. One MD had a telephone book sized records folder fly off of the nurse's station desk. When, when nobody was in the closed part of the wing, staff would see and hear children running and laughing. Wow. Well... Now, I'll just be honest with you, I have seen doctors come in and throw <laughs> like charts around, but that was completely human and very bad manners. Y'all nurses know what I mean. You've probably seen a doctor go off the wall once or twice, but um, I've never actually had a chart thrown at me or even seen one thrown off in the hospital. Um, I don't know, not that I can recall. But now I will tell you, at 3 a.m., anything is possible if you are in a medical facility, right? It just, it, it's nutty. It's weird. There's a strange vibe that comes across in the middle of the night. Y'all third shift workers know what I'm talking about, right? This was sent in by Galen G. Before a celebrity friend or family pet, pass, I will start hearing a song associated with them a couple of weeks before. Oh, no, that's interesting. That's like a premonition. Once, I was very confused because I heard K Sera being whistled. This was the song I had heard being sung, not whistled, 14 years before when my beloved Grams died. We used to sing it together. I was then notified my dearest uncle, her son, had passed away, and I suddenly had a childhood memory of him whistling that same song all the time. For about two weeks now, I have heard a song associated with someone I know. Oh, you're going to have to let us know what happened. 
Like, was that a different song? This is a different person? And did they pass? I mean, it sounds kind of spooky, but in a way, it's kind of nice. You get a heads up, right? Um, I think it's very interesting. I think maybe you have, like, just that gift of premonition, which, you know, I guess it could be a blessing or a curse. Most of the time, I think it's a blessing. I would like to have a heads up with what's going to happen in my life for sure. I would just like to, a premonition of what's going to happen with my hair. Uh, yeah, fan. I'm sorry, there's a fan blowing. It's going to be all over the place. <laughs> just live with it. I mean, I do. This one was sent in by Deanne Hale. As a CNA for 25 plus years, demons are real, no ghosts. They talk through people, mostly male deep voices. They throw objects off of beds, med carts, at people, etc. Lights go on and off, call lights in rooms that no patients stay in. A lot of times when a patient dies, they come out of their body and seem to be the most active for a short time. Christians that pass leave this world peacefully with no demon activity. Okay, this is more of a heavy subject. Um, and I, I know we have a lot of fun on this channel with the ghosts, but I will say that there is a lot of truth to that. You know, I've told you before, we don't know what these spirits are. Okay, we really don't. They don't carry a ghost ID card. You know, it's not like you can ask, hey, prove that you are grandma or whatever. Um, there is an, an element of the demonic that is dark, and it is true. A lot of times they're in a deep male voice. So be careful. And this is why my lovely, spooky, wonderful, wild weirdos, I tell you, don't use the ghost apps and stuff. You don't know who you're communicating with. But that is just, you know, that's me. I don't do it. I won't do it. Look, if a spirit wants to make itself known, it's going to do it. But y'all, be careful out there, okay? Because you don't want anything following you home, right? This is by Black Knight 2149. My grandmother and grandfather lived in an assisted living facility for the last few years of their lives. My grandfather suddenly passed away one day, and so my grandmother was all alone. She was getting ready for her day when she reported to one of her aides that she saw my grandfather and a lady she didn't recognize in her room saying, come on, hun, we are here to take you home. And a few hours later, my grandmother passed away suddenly as well, about two weeks after my grandfather died. Wow. What my grandmother didn't know was that her sister died the next day after my grandfather passed and my mother didn't have the heart to tell her that her sister whom she hadn't seen in many years had passed a day after her husband died so we know my grandpa and her sister were both there to take my grandma home now these kind of stories i have heard so many people uh, with near-death experiences say that their relatives came to get them and we all know as healthcare workers they start talking about mama and daddy and people who have passed away they are on their way out usually and look i completely understand not telling her her sister passed like that's too much for a person I have seen that done a lot of times, like you give them time to grieve one person, but then like she passed and didn't realize, whoa, that is crazy. I mean, I hope that was her sister. Like that wasn't some floozy that he picked up, was it? I mean, probably not, but you gotta wonder. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think it was her sister. And I think that is a beautiful story. Thank you for sending it in. This one comes from Mary Marcus, 5042. I worked at an LTAC once, and we had a quadriplegic patient who had been there for months. He was constantly on the call light, which sometimes frustrated the nurses. I feel ya. I feel ya, honey. <laughs> he would even hit the call light while the nurse was in the room because he knew it irritated some of the nurses. Oh, he sounds like uh, he was a character. He was a handful. Eventually, he passed away in the room he had occupied for many months. 
The day after he passed, we were standing at the nurse's desk right across from his now empty room when the call light sounded. We all had to stop and were just there staring with our mouths open as in what? <laughs> we checked in the room thinking the call light was malfunctioning, but when checked, it seemed to work normally. That call light continued to sound every little bit for that day. Biomed checked the call light and it was working fine. Okay, that was, I guess I cut that off, but there was no malfunction. Wow. Yeah, I've had patients like that who literally just get a kick out of aggravating you. And it sounds like he just wanted one more day, just one more day when he was feeling good <laughs> to aggravate you. Maybe before he went, I don't know, I, you know, like there are some cultures that believe that you stay around for three days after your death before you actually transition to somewhere else. I don't know if that's true. But, uh, yeah, he sounds like a stinker, <laughs> but you all probably missed him a whole lot. And this one comes from Cute Cat Vids 29 I was a hospice nurse and was close to a patient who had brain cancer. She and I had many talks about her death and about dying. She was afraid of death and what her death would do to her family. The last month of her illness, the tumor had grown so big that it had completely incapacitated her and she could no longer move or talk. Aww. She was in a coma state. I continued to visit, of course, and kept talking to her even though she could no longer respond. Going into the weekend one week, she had started to show signs of imminent death. The death rattle, irregular breathing, modeling... I knew she was going to pass that weekend. I asked the on-call nurse to let me know when she passed so I could come be with the family. I had my work phone with me that weekend, but missed a call from the patient's house phone number that was placed approximately 15 minutes before I found that someone had called from the patient's phone. There was a message left. The message was static, and then the voice of my patient, who had been in a coma for almost a month, spoke very clearly and said my name and said goodbye. Then the message cut off. I called the on-call nurse to ask if the patient died. She said she was on her way to the house to pronounce the death and finish up the post-mortem tasks and hadn't had time to call me to let me know. Oh my goodness. I called the family immediately and asked if my patient had suddenly awakened and they and had called me to let her say goodbye. Or they had called me to let her say goodbye. They said the only call they made was to on-call nursing. I am usually pretty skeptical and to this day I cannot explain it. Later that week, I saw the patient's family and played the voicemail for them. They all recognized her voice and were as amazed as I was. To this day, I cannot figure out a logical explanation for what happened other than she called me to say goodbye as she passed. Now, that is a crazy story. And look, we know so many times that Spirits can manipulate technology and electronics and stuff. So, wow, did she call you to say goodbye? I mean, if it was, man, if that was her voice, and the family even said that was her voice, but she was, you know, basically out, not responsive at all. Wow, that is really sweet. Maybe, you know... The angels, whoever came to get her, maybe they helped her dial that number as she was leaving. I think you meant a lot to her, and she wanted to let you know as she was leaving. You know, that's not the first phone call uh, that we've, ghost story that we've heard. Remember the one about the call, like, months later and the picture? Oh, my gosh, that one was terrifying. Um, I think this is beautiful, and it really is the kind of thing that makes you go, hmm... Exactly what is going on here? Um, ghosts be wildin'. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all right. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Again, if you like true ghost stories, you can email me at avalincottage at gmail.com. 
if you don't want to put it in the comments, sometimes things get buried in the comments and I don't see them. So if I don't respond, that's probably it. It got buried somewhere. But um, yeah, please set, shoot me an email or comment on a video and I will include yours in one of the upcoming episodes. Also, I'm getting ready for spooky season. I've got a lot of ideas. We may be doing some different kind of videos for spooky season. We might even go on location somewhere. Wouldn't that be fun? Also, have a lot of spooky um, t-shirts and stuff that I have designed. So check that out on the page. I've opened up for memberships. We'll have a lot of perks and discounts for stuff. If you're interested, check that out. In the meantime, give Scully a like. He's been quiet, like really quiet this whole time. He's probably going to make it up to me later. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you have a great week. And whatever you do, just stay spooky, okay? Bye-bye.